Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Eat Up Mondays with your boy Trevor Pope. I pray that all has been well this past weekend. I pray everything is going well with you guys, truthfully, and just truly appreciate you guys. I'm just thankful for all that you do. Just really thankful for you guys tuning in, all of the encouragement. Listen, God is good. We know that he is good all the time. And I don't know about you. I am truly thankful and appreciative to the Lord for him just keeping me and leading me and guiding me. And I pray that he is doing the same for you guys as well. Listen, before we dig into our meal, please do not forget to click the subscribe button if you are not subscribed to this channel. And after you click that button, you only have one more job to do, and that is to click the bell. It will notify you every time we upload a video. Once again, I appreciate you guys being here. And listen, the food is prepared. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Listen, this week we're going to be coming out of the book of 2 Samuel. Um, and I'm going to give you a little background on 2 Samuel 11. And when you guys get a chance, go and read it for yourself. It's not a super long chapter. Um, I think it is definitely worth reading. Um, but I'm just going to give you a little background on the story. And we're going to dig into our mill. Amen. Um, but 2 Samuel 11, uh, when you read it, you'll find that as the chapter starts off, it talks about at a time when kings would go out to battle, you know, King David. It says that he sent Joab and his servants out to war, but he stayed behind. So if you notice, when you read that chapter, it says this is normally when kings will go out, go out to battle. But instead of David going out to battle, he sends Joab and his servants out to war and he stays behind. And the scripture says, and one night he's on his roof, walking around, talking about David. And in the distance, he looks and he sees a beautiful young lady bathing named Bathsheba. Now, some of you may have heard this story and many of you may have not. Um, but it says, David asks, who is she? And he, find that he finds out that she's married to a guy named Uriah. But even though she's married to Uriah, David sends for her. He sleeps with her and sends her back home. Lo and behold, Bathsheba gets word to David that she is pregnant. And so now David is like, listen, I have to do something to cover this thing up because this is something that I should not have done in the first place. So the Bible says David called Uriah from the war and tried to get him to go home and sleep with his wife to cover up the pregnancy. But the Bible says Uriah refused to go home, eat, drink and lay with his wife while everyone was still on the battlefield. So he was a dedicated soldier. He was all about the cause, all about the battle. So he he didn't even go home. He says, listen, if everybody else is on the battlefield, they're not able to go home and chill and drink and lay with their wives and all that. I'm not going to do it either. So David says, man, I got to try something else. So David tries to get him drunk. But guess what? He still refused to go home and lie with his wife. And this is just shows you the dedication of this guy, Uriah. But now, since all else has failed, David decided, you know, we're going to have to or I'm going to have to kill Uriah or have him killed in battle. And what makes it even worse is the instructions David sent to Joab on how to have Uriah killed was hand delivered in a letter by Uriah himself. And on his way to deliver it, he never looked in it, you know to see what the Bible said, I mean, to see what the letter says, excuse me. And it goes to show us how dedicated and focused this guy was. He would have pretty much done anything that they had asked him because he was down for the cause. And that just goes to show us that, you know, when we put our hands on something or when we get involved in something, you know, we need to go all the way. This guy was 120% in on the cause, but it goes on to say that on his way, um, you know, to deliver it, he brings it to Joab. And just like David wanted, Uriah is killed. You know, Bathsheba hears about it. She mourns Uriah's death. And after her mourning passes, after she finishes mourning, the scripture says David brings Bathsheba to his house. He marries her and they have a son together. But then the scriptures also says something else. 
It says the thing that David did, it displeased the Lord. So God was not happy with what David had done. And once again, when you get a chance, please go and read 2 Samuel chapter 11. But I want to take it from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12. And we're going to read quickly through these scriptures. And I'm just going to give you my thoughts and, and we're, and we're going to finish up this meal. But 2 Samuel 12 and 1 says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the warfaring or the wayfaring, excuse me, man that was come unto him. But took the poor man's lamb, instead he takes the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against that man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And what's so beautiful about the story that Nathan is telling him, the way, the, the reason why it's touching David, you know, so, you know, so, you know, the reason why he's taking this so to the heart, so much to the heart, excuse me, is because we know that David, he tended sheep. So he has a love for animals. So he's taking this thing to the heart. He said, man, listen, this guy needs to die. And once again, verse six, he says, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, don't miss this, guys. Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, listen to what God says to him. If that had been too little, this is how intentional I was on blessing you and, and, and taking care of you. If that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me. God took this as he has that he was despising him by doing what he has done. He says, because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And that's very key there because we've talked about in the past chastisement and when God pulls the covers off of us, whether, you know, we're, we're pastors or leaders of a church or, you know, just uh, saved, you know, and maybe not in leadership of a church, but, you know, just saved and supposed to be living this life for Christ. And, and we get to a point where God is tired of talking to us and he just snatches the cover off. He says, listen, you did this secretly, but I'm going to expose you openly. And that's what normally happens when we keep, you know, dealing with a secret sin and something that God keeps telling us, listen, you need to get that right. You know, you know what I mean? So he says, listen, I'm going to expose this, you know, before everybody, everybody is going to see you know, the, uh, the consequences of your actions. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also have put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. So now David finally repents. Listen, I have sinned against the Lord. And this is the thing. Look, this is what's so beautiful about God, but also sometimes it's dangerous for us because I think sometimes because God is so forgiven, listen, God will forgive us for anything. 
you know, we can go to God and say, God, listen, I messed up. But here's the thing, that thing that we repent of or that we have done, remember, we may repent of it and God may forgive us right away. But depending on what that is, it may have some serious consequences. So even though we've been forgiven, we may be right back with God. We still have to deal with the consequences of our actions. Right. And that's what I really wanted to talk about today is dealing with the consequences of our actions and truly being careful with the decisions that we are making, because they can they can have some 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 damaging effects on our lives. But let's continue reading so we can close this out. It says, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also have put away thy sin. Thou shalt not, shall not die. So we see the mercy of God, right? Verse 14, how be it? Because by this deed, thou has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So God says, listen, you've given my enemies, those that are against me, those that, you know, when we look at our modern day times, always has something to say about Christianity or people that are followers of Christ. He says, listen, you have given them an opportunity to blaspheme me, to, to act as if, you know, I am not who I am because of your actions. So, so he says, listen, the child also that is going to be born shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not eat. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, just like God said. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said unto his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while he was yet alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her. And she bare a son and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. I don't want you to miss that. And he sent by the hand of Nathan, the prophet, and he called his name Jedediah because of the Lord. Now, when we look at this story, this, this is super heavy because even after God told him what would be the consequences of his actions, we see so much of the grace of God still in the midst of this. Even though God struck his first child uh, with Bathsheba and the child died, look who she bore after the child the great and mighty Solomon, right? Which, you know, we see in the, at the end of his life, he didn't make all the great decisions, but we know that he was a very wise man and he did some great things in the Lord. But unfortunately he could not, you know, stay away from, from those women um, that were not of the house of Israel and, and all of the idol worship and the things that he got involved in. Unfortunately, you know, it, it caused his demise. But I said all that to say, listen, God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. But one thing we have to understand about God is that when we make certain decisions, there is going to always be consequences to our actions. Listen, you may have did something in the past where you felt like you didn't, you know, you didn't uh, receive a whole bunch of repercussions. And but that's not always going to be the case. There are going to be some consequences, whether you can see them or not. This right here is blatant, you know, it's, it's out in the sun, you know, God has struck his child and guess what? Some things like this, 
um, you know, when we make these type of decisions can be very severe. The consequences can be very severe. And I just wanted to encourage you guys, listen, be very careful with the decisions that you're making. Even if you're not saved and you're listening to the sound of my voice, I'm talking to you as well, because this here, this is a saved man. This is, this is a man where the, the scripture says later on that David was a man after God's own heart. And look how God dealt with him. You know, we look at how God dealt with Moses. Look how God dealt with Elijah. Like there's, you, you we can't get away when, uh, with making certain decisions that go against God or, or, or go against, you know, uh, what is right. And what brought about, you know, this topic on today, and I hope you guys are still with me because this is something that really hurt my heart when I heard about it, but this is what caused me to talk about this on today. Um, and it's because a few days ago I saw a story and some of you may have heard about this story and, you know, we're not going to mention her name because it's not necessarily about her or, but I, I did want to bring up what happened. You know, there was a young lady, she was 21 years old. Um, and the news said she was pulled over on the highway by two state troopers for driving, over a hundred miles per hour and for suspected DUI. So, you know, I guess the way she was driving, obviously she was driving fast, but she probably was swerving or whatever have you. So when they pulled over, they suspected that, listen, she's probably drunk as well, you know, and later on we would find out, you know, later on they would find out that her blood alcohol was twice the legal limit. But while they have her pulled over, these two state troopers, they get a call that there's a pedestrian, walking in the third lane about two miles down on the highway. So they decide, you know what, we need to go get this guy. You know, we need to get him off of this highway, you know, before he gets killed, you know, so they leave her, you know, and they go to take care of the situation, you know, just probably figuring, listen, this is a priority. If this guy's in the third lane, then obviously he's not too far away from getting hit, especially if it's a part of the highway that's not, you know, lit up that great. And even when it is lit up, you know, people be flying on the highway, especially like I-95 and all these types of highways. But anyway, you know, the cops leave her, you know, and they go to take care of this man. And they said that after they pulled off, she tweets on social media while she's still there in the car. Why did a cop just pull me over and say I was doing 110 and a 50? And after that, the young lady takes off from where she is pulled over from and two miles down the road, she strikes the same two officers with the car and the pedestrian that they were trying to get off the highway and killed them all. And when I saw them bringing her out of the trooper station and I just saw the sheer fear on her face and, you know, obviously if you've ever you know, been drinking or gotten high, you know, whether you had like a, a true drinking problem or not, but let's say you, you, you was drinking or you were high or maybe not even drinking a high, but just made a silly decision. And now you're back in your right mind and processing everything. You could just see the fear on her face and, and just probably everything running through her mind, you know, about the decision that she made that that pretty much has changed her life and is going to change the rest of her life. There's no way around this. And I felt sorry for her, not sorry for the consequences that she's going to face, but that she made this decision, you know, when she didn't have to, you know, because wherever she was drinking at, she could have called the Uber. She could have found some type of way to, to go from point A to point B. But this, this was something that she did all the time, unfortunately. And look, I grew up with people that, you know, had drinking problems and got high. I mean, I used to drink and get high. I didn't really have a drinking problem, but I knew people that had a drinking problem where you could smell it through their skin, coming through their pores, all of that. They drunk every single day and it's sad and unfortunate, but guess what? A lot of them didn't drink and just jump behind the wheel. So once again, this young lady made a bad decision. Now she has to deal with the consequences of her actions. She has changed her family's life. She's changed the two state troopers' families' lives and the guy that was walking on the highway. And I just said all that to say, guys, we have to be very careful whether you're out there and you're listening to me, whether you're saved or not. You know, think twice of the decisions that you are making when they started reading some of the tweets that this young lady tweeted out on social media, I'm drunk. 
um, today. I'm super drunk. Um, I can't wait to get drunk. Um, this, this liquor doesn't get me drunk anymore. So obviously she had a drinking problem and this is what she does. And I think they said one time she even tweeted out, she's the best, dr- you know, uh, drunk driver there is, you know, that, uh, uh, best person there is that, that can drive drunk. And we know that that just sounds crazy. So unfortunately this 21 year old lady, Life is going to be changed forever. I, I pray for the state troopers, you know, the the, the uh, families, the guy that was struck family and her family and for her. But there's no way around these consequences. She's definitely, you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, going to have to spend the rest of her life in jail for a decision that she made. And, you know, rightfully so, you know, because, listen, it only takes a second, guys. And I know I've been lingering on this for a minute, but I'm telling you, man, I mean, I've seen it in my own life. It only takes one bad decision, one moment of anger, one, you know, it, it doesn't take much at all guys for, you know, your life to just change dramatically. So I just wanted to encourage you guys, listen, think before you do, because you just never know where the decision that you're about to make is going to take you for the rest of your life. But listen, know that I love you guys. Um, I know we sat at the table for a while and, and, and ate for a while, but I just wanted to really encourage you guys that there are consequences to our actions. And if we're not careful, you know, those actions could lead us to, to death physically, death spiritually, somebody else's death physically, somebody else's death spiritually. And, you know, that's something that we don't want. But listen, Once again, know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.